The year is 1952. Ford makes its very first overhead valve V8 called the Y block because the block's deep skirts, which gave the engine a Y shaped appearance, hence the name, was introduced in 1952 for Lincoln cars and heavy duty trucks. Don't get this engine confused with Ford Y block. They're two totally different engine families. The Lincoln Y block is considered big block design because displacements could go from 279 cubic inch displacement to 368 cubic inch displacement, whereas the Ford Y block could only go from 239 to 312. It's also important to note that parts do not interchange between the Ford Y block and the Lincoln Y block, except for the oil pump and distributor. They could be used in either family. The Lincoln Y block featured an overhead valve layout, five main bearing push rod, shaft mounted rocker arms, hydraulic valve lifters on Lincoln Y blocks, while the Ford HD series used solid valve lifters for most of their engines. High swirl combustion chamber, which provides greater turbulence of the fuel air mixture for more efficient burn, shorter strokes, full flow spin on oil filter. Is this the first engine to feature that? Because remember, most cars from this time period have oil lines going to an external canister with oil lines going back into the engine, which can clog pretty easily. Positive crankcase ventilation, weatherproof ignition, automatic type choke, pressurized oiling system, chain driven timing gears. The Lincoln design did not share the unusual over under intake port configuration found on the Ford Y block design. In this episode, we will cover displacements of 279, 302, 317, 332, 341, and 368. Look at those displacements. They are in other engine families as well, which makes it super confusing when covering Ford. Also important to note, this is an engine overview episode. Born stroke sizes may be rounded. We are only going from base horsepower to max horsepower. Introduced in 1952 for the Ford Heavy Duty Truck Line, 279 cubic inch displacement, Y block, 4.6 liters. It's good for 152 horsepower at 3,800 RPM, 246 pound feet, or 333 newton meters at 2,000 RPM with a bore of 3.5625 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. Compression is 7 to 1. Years this engine was used was from 1952 through 1955, found in the Ford HD truck series. Also introduced in 1952, 317 cubic inch displacement Y block, 5.2 liters. It's good for anywhere between 160 to 205 horsepower, 4,200 RPM, up to 305 pound feet or 414 Newton meters at 2,200 RPM with a bore of 3.8 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. Compression is eight to one, five main bearings. Years this engine was used was from 1952 to 1954 in Lincoln products. The Lincoln versions used hydraulic lifters. The Ford versions used solid valve lifters. In the heavy duty trucks, it was offered from 1952 through 1955. In 1955, the 317 was bored to bring displacement to 341 cubic inch displacement Y block. 5.2 liters. It's good for 225 horsepower at 4,400 RPM, 332 pound feet or 450 Newton meters at 2,400 RPM with a bore of 3.9 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. Compression was eight and a half to one. This engine was only used in 1955 for Lincoln products. 
Introduced in 1956 for the Ford Heavy Duty Truck Line F750, C750, B750. 302 cubic inch displacement Y8, 4.9 liters. It's good for 196 horsepower at 3,800 RPM, 290 pound feet, or 394 newton meters in or around 2,000 RPM, with a bore of 3.625 inches and a stroke of 3.625. 66 inches. Compression is 7.6 to 1. Years this engine was used was from 1956 all the way out to 1963. Ford would also introduce this engine in 1956 for the Ford Heavy Duty Truck Line F800, F900, T750. Trucks like that, 332 cubic inch displacement, Y8. 5.4 liters. It's good for 190 to 212, perhaps a touch more horsepower at 3,800 RPM, 316 pound feet, or 429 newton meters at 2,700 RPM, with a bore of 3.8 inches and a stroke of 3.66 inches. Compression is 7.5 to 1. Years this engine was used was from 1956 until 1963. In 1956, the 341 was bored for the final time to 4 inches, bringing displacement to 368. Cubic inch displacement overhead valve Y8, 6 liters. It's good for anywhere between 285 all the way up to 300 horsepower at 4,600 RPM. 400 pound feet or 563 newton meters at 2400 rpm with a bore of four inches and a stroke of 3.7 inches compression was 9.7 to 1 years this engine was used was from 1956 through 1957 it was used in lincoln's and then in 1957 it was brought down to the mercury division it was offered in the turnpike cruiser Colony Park, Montclair, Monterey, Voyager, and Commuter. In 1958, Ford would introduce three new engine families. The FE, which stood for Ford Edsel. And then they would introduce two other families, which would take the place of the Lincoln Y-Block. M-E-L, Mercury, Edsel, Lincoln. Which was to go in all three of those products. Edsel didn't make it past 1960, but... The M-E-L did. Anyway, the other engine family was called SD, Super Duty, which they went into all of Ford's heavy-duty trucks. But that's honestly a different engine episode for another day. All right. Now it's time for Would You Rather, two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1952 Lincoln or 1956 Lincoln Premier or... 1954 Lincoln Capri. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for the second scenario. Bit outside the box, but that's how we like it here on this channel. 1957 Mercury Turnpike Cruiser or 1957 Lincoln Premier or 1957 Voyager Wagon. Once again, going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have your comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I say that so if you do want to reach out, I will actually answer you. Like, I get so frustrated when you try to reach out to somebody and they never get back to you. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. And until next time, toodaloo!